What's up guys, it's Josh from Cupid Techie where we dive into all things Linux and tech. And today I'm super excited to talk about the latest release of Kali Linux version 2024.2. And if you've been following my channel for a while, we took a look at Kali last September and there have been some amazing updates since then. So whether you're a seasoned pro or just getting started with Linux, there's a lot to unpack in this release. So let's jump right into it. All right, so let's break down what's new and noteworthy in Kali Linux 24.2. And I'm at Kali.org and this is their blog. And this is the release notes. It was released on June 5th, 2024. So these are the release notes and I'll go through it without reading everything. But this release comes out a bit later than usual. But trust me, it was worth the wait. The delay was due to some significant under the hood changes and the community has been incredible in helping out with new packages, bug fixes and updates. Now, firstly, let's talk about the T64 transition, which you can see on the screen right now. And this is a big deal, especially for those using 32 bit platforms. This transition to 64 bit time T type helps prevent the year 2038 issue, which could cause serious problems down the line. Most users won't see much difference except for a lot of package upgrades and new packages with a T64 suffix. However, if you're on ORML or ARM HF architecture, make sure you use app full dash upgrade instead of the normal apt upgrade to avoid any hiccups. Now, next up, we've got some desktop changes. And Kali Linux 2024.2 brings GNOME 46, which is all about polishing the user experience. And so that means themes and extensions have been updated to support the new GNOME shell, making everything smoother and more intuitive. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more on the XFCE side, there are updates specifically for Kali Undercover and high DPI modes, enhancing stability and fixing minor bugs. Now, pretty much in every release, new release of Kali, it comes with new tools. And this release includes 17 new tools added to the network repository. And some of the ones I want to highlight is Auto Recon for multi-thread network reconnaissance. Also, Gitsploit for searching and downloading exploits. Also, I want to point out Pi Installer for converting Python programs into standalone executables. Plus countless other packages have been updated to their latest version. Now finally, let me cover some of the miscellaneous and there have been some tweaks to mirrors and fixes for bugs, including one in the 6.6 .6 kernel that caused slowdowns and crashes in certain virtualization software. But the upcoming 6.8 kernel will address this and it might already be available by the time you watch this video. So now that we covered everything new, let me go down and show you guys how to download it right fast. All you have to do is go up to the top hit. And of course, I had a link down in the description of the video, but you got uh, plenty of options in order to download it. They even have a mobile version. I believe they have some updates to NetHunter app, which was talked about in those release notes. I skimmed over it because I don't really use mobile devices when it comes to operating system. But if you guys use that, they do have some updates to NetHunter in this latest release. And for all you Windows users out there, I wanted to point out they do have that Windows subsystem for Linux. And it's also included out of the box with modern Windows. And so you can get it installed on your Windows operating system. But here's the installer image. I already have it downloaded. So I won't go down and click it, but just showing you guys, you can download it right here. This is that latest version, 64 bit, 32 bit, and then the Apple Silicon arm 64 and then they also have a weekly a net installer and then everything which is huge this one is 11 gigs this is 495 megabytes because it downloads all the packages and then there's a weekly it's about 4.0 gigabytes so four gigabytes and then you also got your checksums and all that stuff but you can just download the main installer complete offline installation with customizations which I already have. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream, complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.org. 
www.ifmyfamilyfinance.co. So I'm booting up into the live ISO. Let's quickly run through the installer. I know you guys can't see this from behind my face, but this is just saying continue. So we're selecting the language, hit continue, and then our location, United States, and then American English. So just basically select all the information based on where you're located and what language you speak and all that stuff. And then it'll go right into the installer from there. Put your full name of the user. I'm gonna just put Jot. You can put what you want on there. That's if you're setting up an account. Now, that's one thing I didn't explain. When you first boot it up, you got a couple of options. You can go right into the graphical installer. You can go to the command line installer, or you can boot up the OS in a live environment and just use the default. So whatever, if you don't want to install it on any hardware. All right, let's hit continue there. Type in our password and then type it in twice. And then we get to continue there. Now this is where it'll try to partition your disk. It's gonna ask you what options you wanna do as far as setting it up. And you got four different options. So you got your guided use entire disk. You can use LVM as well. The guided entire disk, you can use LVM and encrypt it. And this is only beneficial if you're installing it on hardware, just really to protect your system because it'll all be encrypted. And then you also have the manual option where you can partition it yourself. So. Let's go down here, continue there. I'm gonna use the guided. It's gonna find the disk that's on the system. So select whatever disk you got set up for it. And then all files in one partition, you can separate your home directory. That's beneficial if you move around to different operating systems a lot, but you use the same software configuration files. You just copy your home directory. It's easier that way to get all your home directory files. If you need to install Kali again or reinstall it, all you have to do is copy your home directory back over and everything is set back the way you had it. And then some people, they'll separate their home, bar, and temp in their own partition. So you have those options there. Let's hit continue. And then that's pretty much it. It's gonna ask you, are you sure you wanna make these changes to the hard drive? And I believe this is the last step. We already set up our account. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanna show you guys how easy it is to install but we'll look at the operating system when we get to it all right so the base install is complete and the next thing we need to select is our desktop environment and like i told you gnome has some updates as well as xfce i always show you guys xfce so i'm gonna select gnome this time i've never used kali in gnome except for i think black orch or one of those other distros used gnome as the desktop environment not xfce and we all know kali uses xfce that's the default so that's why i always show it to you guys but let's look at the gnome version just to switch it up a little bit and then also it comes with the collection of tools basically all the base tools and then top 10 most popular and the default recommended tools available in the live system. So let's go down and hit continue there. We'll get pretty much everything we need in order to set up our system for pen testing and all that stuff. So let's go down and hit continue there and let it go through the install of the software. As you can see, it's about 2,624 packages. I'll give it a little time and I'll come back when it finishes. All right, so the installation is complete. Right now, it's just gonna do the bootloader grub. So install bootloader on the primary drive, hit continue there, and then you can select that partition and hit continue and it'll go on and install grub and i'll be back when it finishes and as you can see the installation is complete now so let's go on and restart this thing man and it's crazy it feels like this video has been going on forever i'm gonna hit continue it's gonna reboot and i'll be back when the system comes up all right so we finally at the login screen for it so it's got our account I just selected login and like I said, I installed GNOME on here. So it's that latest version of GNOME. It's my first time looking at Kali with GNOME on it, to be honest. Uh, I think I've seen it in one of the other distros that are out there, like security distros. But this is my first time installing Kali like this. So let me switch to display. All right, so the first thing I want to do is show you guys some of the system information and I'll zoom in on the terminal so you guys can see a little more or a little better. So let's go sudo apt updates. And what you want to do is update your system. I'm not going to run the updates. I'm just going to refresh the repositories, but I'm going to pull up uh, NeoFed. So sudo apt install NeoFed and press enter. And then we can get this guy installed for us. All right, and so let's run NeoFetch right fast and just see everything about the system. I, I like NeoFetch because it pulls up basically everything. I can show you guys in one swoop everything about the operating systems. Kali Linux, of course, rolling release. That's just dealing with the virtual machine. But the kernel is 6.6.15. 
AMD 64. It has 2,826 packages on there by default. And from what we've seen up here, when we ran these pseudo app updates, that let us know we had about 300 in packages that needed to be upgraded. So also the shell is ZHS 5.9. Let's see known for 6.1. Window manager, mutter. Window manager theme, Cali Dork. It's the Adwada GTK4 Dork theme for the whole system icon flat remix blue dork so that's what this is now here those icons and then also the terminal is the gnome terminal obviously because we installed gnome and then just some more system information down here so we got our memory size i only gave it like eight gigs of memory two cores something to that effect and everything else is like virtualized so the gpu virtualized now let's check out one of the new pieces of software right fast so let's type sudo apps install and let's check out auto recon which is one of the new packages that they put out there so we can get this installed and like i said it's best to update the system first but you definitely want to do that before installing any new software all right cool so that's installed but also i wanted to install another package which totally forgot to do that but let's install another one of the new packages what is it git sploits and let's check this out and i've never played around with this software just forgive me if i fumble through it but i'm gonna just show you guys a quick example of running one of these applications so let's test out auto recon and we could type auto recon and then i'm gonna just run it on my personal network so it, it mainly does a scan a automatic scan for you so i'm gonna run it on the main network and it's a 24 network and let's go on and press enter and just let this thing scan and it'll go through and find all the hosts it'll discover open ports and all that stuff it's all auto for you and it also looks at udp tcp all that stuff i do more of an in-depth look at this application and like i said it'll scan pretty much everything on your network or on whatever network you're targeting and you can see some of the hosts that i have here set up a lot of my servers or in low ip so 192.10.5 I have my network set up in a specific way. I have virtual machines running certain services out there. If you look up here, you can see port 22 open pretty much on all of them because I use the Ansible for automation when it comes to updates and certain things like that. I just wanted to show you a quick view of this application. That way you guys can check it out. But let's check out Gitsploit as well. So let's Gitsploit. And then I believe in that scan, I saw Apache server. And I know Apache is out there on, any, on one of my servers. I'm run this right fast so gitsploit this will basically search for exploits related to a specific software so whichever software that you type in here it'll give you that information and i was asked for an api key which i don't have an api key so that may not work for me i'm not gonna worry about it i'll do a video showing you guys how to set this up and everything i just want to at least get it installed and show you guys we can't show you that one but that was super cool. If you want to look at all the applications, you just click up here in the app and you can go through and look at all the cybersecurity tools that are out there. And like I said, some people would call this like script kitty, but these tools are just meant to help you, especially if you work in the cybersecurity industry or the field. A lot of this is actually used in the field for protection as well as offense so defense and offense you got your purple cali that's out there and you got your regular cali linux for offense which allows you to check for vulnerabilities and all that stuff in whatever environment that you're working in and this is why it's recommended in the industry to learn this forensics analysis you could do reverse engineering on malware just trying to figure out how it works all that cool stuff up in here cracking passwords super cool but then if you go under a usual applications i just want to show you guys that but this is your normal like settings all your applications cherry tree sqlite database browser text editor graphics so you got an image viewer internet it comes with firefox and chrome on there you can get the tour browser installed on here if you want to crypt setup so you set up your encryption for files or directories or something to that effect you got video you can use this as a normal Linux distro. I know a lot of people that do that, they use Kali for that purpose. They just use it as their main operating system, which is nothing wrong with that. It's just 
it's no need for all these tools if you're not going to be using it if you're not using all these tools then what's the point of having them this is like a specific os for a specific reason and another thing about cali there is like no software center they want you to do everything from the terminal which makes sense you would want to do everything from the terminal in my opinion and then a lot of the tools that you'll find in that application they run from the command line just like we ran the auto recon as well as the get exploit is ran from the terminal and then also i wanted to go through and show you guys at least the settings just for people that are new that have not used cali before this is the gnome settings menu you can go in and make all your changes that you want resolution bluetooth networking you got vpns proxies all that stuff the appearance if you want to change like the backgrounds make it look a little different all that cool stuff and then you got application preferences notifications all that good stuff online accounts it defeats the purpose if you adding like your google account here and all that other stuff i wouldn't do that that's up to you you can add more users though if you go down here secure shell ssh network access if you want to hardware details date time region all that stuff so pretty much all your settings are under this menu so you can make all your changes there all right and so that wraps up our overview of cali linux 2024.2 and i hope you're as excited about these updates as i am so whether you're upgrading from your current setup or diving into Cali for the first time, there's plenty here to explore and take advantage of. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the Keep It Techie channel for more Linux tutorials and tech tips. Also, make sure you drop any questions or comments down below. You guys know I love hearing from you guys. I know I'm a little behind on the comments, but I'm catching up. But thanks for watching, and as always, keep it techie.